As the conflict in Ukraine approaches its 1000th day, the Russian military's losses have reached colossal proportions, becoming a major topic of discussion in think tanks. More than 400,000 killed and wounded, and more than 150,000 confirmed deaths, represent the worst losses in modern warfare. Moscow faces challenges that could determine the future of its military campaign. Research by independent journalists and Western intelligence agencies shed light on the true scale of the losses, writes the New York Times. According to independent Russian publications Media Zona, BBC, and Medusa, the total number of Russian soldiers killed since the start of the war has reached 150,000. This data is confirmed by an analysis of notarial records, obituaries and excess mortality statistics. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Adding the seriously wounded who never returned to the battlefield, the number of irreparable losses exceeds 400,000. This figure already exceeds the losses of any industrial power since World War II. Many of the dead are young men who were working yesterday, building families and not thinking about war. Russia is paying a terrible price for its ambitions, comments military analyst Olga Ivshina. Western assessments, even more gloomy forecasts US and NATO intelligence agencies put the toll even higher, at 600,000 to 700,000 killed and wounded. Despite the limitations of the methods used to calculate it, these figures include both the dead and the lightly wounded. The Pentagon is using satellite imagery, communications interceptions and open-source analysis to get a more complete picture, although Western experts point out that Russia is hiding real data, making the task more difficult. In response to the losses, Russia has accelerated the recruitment of contract soldiers and mobilized soldiers. In June, the Russian Defense Ministry announced that there were 33 million people fit for service, but according to journalists, only about 900 people join the army every day. Russia is also actively recruiting foreign fighters. A recent Pentagon report indicates that Moscow has formed a joint force of 50,000 Russian and North Korean troops for operations on the Eastern Front. However, as analysts note, even these measures do not cover current losses. A war of attrition inevitably tests the strength of the army and the state. Losses of hundreds of thousands killed and wounded undermine not only Russia's numerical superiority, but also its economy, social stability and the trust of citizens. The question that remains open is whether the Kremlin is prepared to continue this war at any cost, or will it have to reconsider its ambitions? In the face of such losses, more and more experts are asking, how much longer can Russia endure? As the war in Ukraine reaches the 1000th day, Russia's Bryansk region has been hit with the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, Ukrainian media reported on Tuesday. The attack occurred on the night leading to November 19, days after U.S. President Joe Biden authorized Ukraine's use of U.S.-supplied long-range missiles in attacks deep into Russia. ATACMS struck the 67th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate of the Russian Defense Ministry in the city of Karachivo. The strike caused an explosion and fire. The information was confirmed by the Ukrainian general staff. According to the report, a total of 12 explosions occurred after the strike. The targeted warehouse stores artillery shells, including North Korean-made shells, KB guided aerial bombs, anti-aircraft missiles and shells for multiple rocket launcher systems. Karachivo residents reported explosions and detonations, including an alleged attack on a military base, as shared in local social media chats and reported by Russian media outlet Astra. The town lies more than 100 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Kremlin has warned against Ukraine's use of long-range missiles in strikes against Russia. Germany is reportedly set to begin large-scale deliveries of kamikaze drones to Ukraine, which have high autonomy in conditions of electronic warfare and can effectively strike distant targets. As Bild writes, these UAVs have already been nicknamed Mini Taurus. 
They have modern systems that make them invulnerable to Russian electronic warfare systems and GPS jamming. He delivery of drones was also confirmed by German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius. The drones in question are attack UAVs from the Helsing Company, equipped with artificial intelligence technologies that provide them with greater autonomy in hostile environments with electronic warfare interference. These drones are compared to the Taurus missiles, which Chancellor Olaf Scholz has repeatedly refused to provide. The reports indicate that 4,000 of these UAVs have been ordered for Ukraine. Deliveries are expected to begin in December, with several hundred drones arriving per month. Some prototypes are already undergoing trials and improvements in real combat conditions in Ukraine's east. A key feature of these UAVs is their advanced software, which helps them navigate the terrain using various markers, allowing them to reach their targets even in challenging weather or on scorched earth terrain, as well as in conditions of electronic warfare. Once the UAV identifies the target and the operator confirms it, the drone can autonomously strike the target even if communication is lost. In addition, German drones have a flight range four times greater than that of conventional Ukrainian kamikaze UAVs, and are significantly cheaper than their Western counterparts. Bill does not disclose the exact cost of these drones, but the American Switchblade 600 costs around 100,000 euros, and the Russian Zala Lancet costs 35,000 euros. According to Pistorius, the Ukrainian armed forces will be able to effectively use these UAVs against key Russian military facilities, in particular command posts and logistics centers. Berlin may also consider implementing similar technologies in its Bundeswehr. In October, it became known that Germany would allocate billion-dollar aid packages to support Ukraine's defense efforts. By the end of the year, with the support of our partners from Belgium, Denmark and Norway, we will deliver another package worth 1.4 billion euros to Ukraine," said German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Russia wants to regain full control of the Kursk region ahead of possible peace talks under the administration of new U.S. President Donald Trump. However, Ukrainian troops continue to repel enemy counterattacks, The Washington Post reports. It is clear that Moscow will not begin any negotiations until it expels every single Ukrainian soldier from the Kursk region, Konstantin Remchikov, editor-in-chief of Nezavisimeya Gazeta, told journalists. The publication noted that Russia has begun to realize that the Kursk region could become one of the levers of pressure in possible negotiations. Therefore, the Kremlin wants to enter into dialogue only from a position of strength, returning the region under its control. Ukrainian forces seized up to 1,500 square kilometers of Russian territory in the first two weeks of the Kursk operation in August, Black Bird Group analyst Pazi Peroinen told reporters. He stressed that the Russians have been constantly counterattacking since then, and with the offensive now coming from three directions, he predicts that Ukrainian-held territory will shrink in the coming days. According to U.S. intelligence, Russia sent at least 10,000 North Korean soldiers to the Kursk region, the publication said. The agency noted that one of the major counteroffensives was carried out almost immediately after Donald Trump was elected U.S. president. Journalists shared that the latest counteroffensive by Russian occupiers did not go smoothly. According to them, the enemy achieved only minor successes and also lost a significant number of troops and equipment. A 39-year-old Ukrainian soldier named Alexander, who works in intelligence in the Kursk region as part of the 82nd Brigade, told reporters that in recent days the defense forces have destroyed more than 50 Russian vehicles, including armored personnel carriers and tanks. According to him, Russian soldiers constantly make the same mistakes, they drive on roads that are controlled by Ukrainian firepower, miss turns and even shoot at their own infantry positions. Artem Efanov, a drone operator in the 82nd Brigade, told reporters that he saw Russian troops getting stuck in swamps, bogs, and rivers, with muddy terrain preventing them from successfully advancing. In addition, the former company commander of the Adar Battalion, Yevgeny Daiki, spoke about whether Ukraine needs to hold the Kursk region. He noted that there is a second part of the operation, which has not worked yet.